Hi friends, welcome to Arc Tutorials. In today's episode, we are bringing you top 10 interview question and answers on REST API. REST has become a de facto standard uh, in terms of communication between the client and the server. In, in most mod modern applications, you will find that the architecture is based on REST. So it's very important that if you attend any interview, you will be bound to ask questions on REST APIs. So in this episode, we will learn all about it. The top 10 interview question and answers on REST API. So the first question that is often asked is, explain what is REST? What is your understanding of uh, RESTful APIs? So you can answer it like, REST when expanded is representational state transfer. So it's an architectural style developed by Roy in 2000. REST presents a set of constraints to be used in the creation of web services. The services that use REST constraints are called as RESTful web services. For an interface to be referred to as RESTful API or uh, REST API, it should satisfy the six guiding constraints. So some of the those, those six are, it should be client server based architecture, it should be stateless, it should be cacheable, it should be uniform interface, it should have layered system, and it should have code on demand. So these are the six guiding principles that, uh, that are applied uh, while designing the REST APIs. Now, after satisfying the constraints, the RESTful web services can be used to provide an interface between the computer system and the internet. So we often use a web browser or a API tool like Postman to submit or interact or recall the APIs. Using this interface, a system can access and manipulate the resources provided on the web by using a predefined set of operations. So that is what uh, is in detail about the rest. Uh, so that is what you should answer, uh, that it should be client server, it should be stateless, it should be cacheable. That way you give a clear picture to the interviewer that you are ready and you understand the REST architecture. What is a resource in a REST API? So in the REST architecture, every content is a resource. It can be a text file, HTML pages, images, videos, or business data. These resources are identified by the URI or global IDs, which can be used by the REST client. The most uh, used representation of the resources is XML and JSON. But if you talk about more modern web applications, JSON is becoming a de facto uh, mode for communication. But XML can also be used. Now, what is options in REST API? So the options that are in the REST are called annotations that are used to indicate whether a method um, responds to the HTTP options request only. It allows the client of the REST API to determine what HTTP methods. For example, it can be a GET, POST, PUT, DELETE that can be used for the resource. So the client determines without, without initiating a resource request. The REST options method is also used for the cross-origin resource sharing request. So this is very important, often asked also in the interviews, so make sure you understand this well. What is a URI in REST? So URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifiers, which is used to identify each resource in the application in the REST architecture. An HTTP operation is called by the client application to access the resource. In the construction of a URI, to identify a resource, some rules are to be followed. The resource should be defined in the plural noun. The URI is case sensitive. So use a lowercase letter when identifying a URI. There should be no spaces included in the URI. The created URI should be backward, comp backward compatibility. For example, you will have TCP protocol or FTP or whatever, then followed by service, followed by resource type, followed by the resource ID. So that is the format that we should follow when defining a URI. 
Now, what is a payload in REST? So, the payload is used by the REST API to pass and return the data structures. Or, in simple words, we can also say this is the data contract between the client and the server. The input payload is a filter definition passed into the request to test result resources. The output payload is the set of test results that is returned by the server. So payloads have a predefined structure to easily create, consume, manipulate and present it to the client tools. So remember that whenever you talk about input payload, it is the one which the client is sending. Whenever we talk about output payload, it is the output which the client is, which the server is giving. What are the different types of HTTP requests supported by the REST APIs? So some of the different uh, HTTP methods that are supported are get, post, put, patch, and delete. So get is used, uh, usually returns whenever 200, whenever you return or get the data from the server. Post is when you use to create new resources, that is sending data from client to server. Put is usually used to updating an existing resource. And then we use patch to modify the resource. Delete, again, it is straightforward. It is used to delete this particular resource. So those are the different uh, HTTP requests or also known as HTTP methods. What is difference between AJAX and REST API? So AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Now using this, uh, it's a technology using XHR, which is XML HTTP request object. We send the data from client to server. Whereas REST is uses HTTP requests to transfer the data between client and server. Now AJAX and REST are completely different. They are orthogonal. You can use REST for creating an AJAX call. REST is a one-way implementation of AJAX. So remember the difference between AJAX and REST because this is what um, is also often asked if you are applying for a, uh, if, you, if you are attending an interview, they'll want to know the difference between AJAX and REST API. Now, this is again a commonly asked question if you are attending uh, a interview which is related to APIs, they'll ask you what, what is Postman? How do you use it? So Postman is a tool uh, which is popularly used uh, for testing and uh, with the backend community where we will use it to design, debug, document, and even publish the APIs in one place. So it's a tool to test your APIs locally, easily. Postman can also be used to create a mock server so that you can simulate the endpoints and simulate the response. Now list down some differences between SOAP and REST. Now this is again interesting question. They want to know your basic understanding on the different types of how these REST and SOAP and XML are designed. So SOAP is nothing but simple object access protocol. It is used to exchange data between different platforms easily. It has a specification and a WSDL file that has information about the location and the function of the web service. Whereas REST is an architectural style pattern to create a RESTful web service. It uses normal HTTP requests to receive and request the resource on the web. REST uses SOAP as an underlining protocol for the creation of web services, as it's just an architectural design. So remember friends, again, like difference between AJAX and REST, similarly, they might even ask you about difference between SOAP and REST. Which markup language is used in REST API? So there are there is no bounded um, language that needs to be used. It's again preference and project to project, but mostly there are two different languages. One is XML and the other is JSON form. XML is your uh, extensible markup language which is used to store and transfer the data. Whereas JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, is used to serialize the data and transfer it. It is lightweight than XML and can transfer any amount of data as the XML with less, less bandwidth.
Now, Lick, can you tell me which are the some of the famous or most uh, used uh, response codes or status codes? So these are the status codes. Whenever it is starting with 2x, that means either 200, 201, it indicates that the request was accepted successfully. 200, 201, 202. So 200 means okay. 201 means created. 202 is accepted. 204 is no content. The there are other standards like 300 series, 400 series, and 500. 400 means usually it is client error status code. 500 is usually the server side error code. 300 means the client may, must make additional action to complete the request. So these are th common things that are used to design. So go through that 200 series, 300, 400 and 500. So by looking at the status codes, they will understand what error might be going on. So it's important you go through it. All right, friends. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial on REST API top interview question and answers. Up next is JavaScript and CSS top interview question and answers. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next episode.